Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Gray Bearded Green Beret. Just wanted to make some jerky for some of my upcoming classes for me to eat. Uh, so I thought I would share with you how I build my TP smoker and actually make that jerky. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to prep this meat for jerky. And what I don't want is any fat on the jerky at all. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come around it and start getting rid of that as much as possible. Once I've got the fat off, I want to determine which way my grain is running because when I'm making jerky strips, I want to run with the grain. And when I'm making these strips, what I want to do is dry the meat out without cooking it. So a couple of things that I'm going for, I'm going for a cold smoke and I'm also going to coat this with a seasoning that has a high amount of salt in it, which is an osmotic, which is also going to pull moisture out. And then the drying process is going to continue from there. So. What I want to cut is thin strips with the grain. I don't want the strips any thicker than that.
any place that I have a lot of fat, I'm going to get rid of that. Let's use that for stew meat or something. Alright, so now that I've got my stuff cut in the strips, I'm going to look for larger pieces of fat because that's going to actually be what goes rancid in your jerky. So a little bit of fat is just going to make it chewy, but if you get a lot, it can make it go bad. Now they've got that about as lean as it's going to get. I'm going to put my seasonings on. So for the seasonings, what I'm using is just my my beef rub. My beef rub is a one to one, 50-50 ratio of seasoned salt and adobo seasoning with black pepper. So. This does a couple of things. One, it gives it flavor, but the salt in it is also an osmotic. So it's gonna pull moisture out of the meat, which is my goal whenever I'm making jerky, is to dry the meat. So one thing I'll caution you on, though, is this dehydrates, essentially, and it really concentrates the amount of salt that you put on it. So you don't need to uh, you don't need to get too crazy on on the seasoning but I do want to get it on as quickly as possible so it can start pulling moisture out of the meat for me and that lack of moisture is one of the things that help preserve the jerky as well as the cold smoke that I'm gonna put on it it's gonna inhibit bacteria and once it's dried out it's a lot less likely that it's going to spoil then I can take this to the field with me so just give it a dusting and then just because I like black pepper I'm going to make this some black pepper jerky Hit the other side with some pepper. And that'll immediately start drawing moisture out as well as season the meat so that it has a better flavor jerky. I'm just going to put that in a bag. Let that salt work a little. While I prep the smoker. All right, so for the tripod, because it's not structural, I'm not doing a full tripod lash or a three pole shear lash. I'm doing a cordage conservation lash to where all I'm doing is taking the length of cordage and tying a square knot. And that's right over left come around and then left over right come around and tighten that down into a square so 
flip it around on itself to make two loops. Slide that over the top of the three poles I'm using for the tripod. And now when I stand it up, I'm going to rotate that middle pole up and around. And I've created a simple tripod. This is how I tie a reduced square lashing. And this is what I'm using to actually tie the platform to the tripod. So to start, there's a couple different ways to do it. And keep in mind, keep in mind this is not a structural lashing. This is just to keep the platform in place. So I'm not going to do as many wraps or fraps as I would for something that was meant to hold body weight. Uh, so I don't want you to confuse the two. I just want to show you real quick a reduced lashing that I'm using. So I'm starting these lashings with a clove hitch. For the clove hitch, I'm just coming around, forming a loop, and then coming back through that loop. And tightening that down. I'll show you that one more time. I'm going to take the length of cordage, come around whatever I'm anchoring it to, and that forms a half hitch around the anchor. Then I want to continue coming around that anchor and come back up through the center. And I'll tighten that down. For the clove hitch, you've got two parallel wraps with a diagonal locking bar. Then from there, the second stick that I'm trying to lash to, I'm going to cross that over. Now I'm going to come around the front, which captures one side of that. Around the back side, back over the front, and around the back side again. So with my hands out of the way here, I went over to capture it around the back side and then back over and around the back side again. That is one wrap. I'm going to do two wraps. This is a reduced square lash so I'm not going to do as many wraps or frapping turns as I would for something that's structural meant to hold body weight. Now I'm going to retrace that back around. I'm going to come around the front side, around the back, back over the front side, and around the back again. Now from here I need to change directions. I've got two wraps on there. I need to change directions, so I'm going to come around the front, and then I'm going to pull to make my first frapping turn, and that frapping turn tightens your wraps up. Come around a second time, now I've got my frapping turn in. I can pull that tight. And if you want, you can take a second frapping turn. Pull that tight. And then I started with a clove hitch on the bottom, so I want to finish with the clove hitch on top. I'm just going to bring that up. Create my half hitch again, coming through, leave myself a little bit of space, come towards the inside with my second half hitch, and tighten that down. And once again that gives me two parallel wraps with the diagonal locking bar. That is my reduced square lash that I'm using to actually tie my platform to the tripod itself. So I'm going to show you real quickly how to make a bushcraft clothespin. And this is what I use to make this is what I use to keep the tarp held together. So 
I don't want this, I'm going to split this, but I don't want it to split all the way up, so I'm going to protect the top of it with a common whipping knot. So all I have to do for the whipping knot is create a bite, place that bite over the top of the small stick that I'm using for the clothespin, wrap this around starting from the top, and I'm wrapping my way back down towards this loop. I can probably get three or four good wraps in. And then I'll take that tail and pass it through the loop. And capture it. Now with this tail, I'm going to pull all of that up underneath the whipping. Then all I have to do is trim off that end. And I'll burn it to keep it from fraying. Now I've got my Bushcraft clothespin to keep that tarp secure. All right, so you're also, for this teepee smoker, gonna need a few stakes. So all I did was take a stick. I'm just crowning the end. <coughs> I'm just crowning the end so it doesn't split put in a point on the other end and I'm going to carve a simple stake notch so I'll make a stop cut about a third of the way through and then just trim towards that stop cut The tarp that I'm using is actually a canvas painter's drop cloth, and I've got it cut down kind of to size. This is about a six foot by 12 foot drop cloth, and you can see I've used it before. I'll bring that around. Once I get it around, I'll take one of my clothespins and secure it. Wrap this around the front. And I'll secure it the rest of the way down. The clothespins, I'm just going to pinch that material together, run that into that split, and slide it on until it's tight, and that holds it securely. I've got a lot of excess on this tarp, so I'm just going to roll that up and keep it taut.
Now, I don't want this hanging the way that it's hanging now because I'm going to have a small fire going in there and as the wind picks this up, it could actually move my tarp, it could actually blow my tarp into my fire. So I'm going to stake that out a little tighter like you would a teepee to keep that from happening. So for this particular tarp, like I said, this tarp is dedicated to a teepee smoker, so I'll just stake it right through the canvas in the holes that are already there and that's how I stake it out. If you're using a tarp that you mean to reuse, like one that you're using in the field, then you would just want to stake those out like you would a tent or a tarp. You know, so instead of driving through there, if you don't have grommets, then you could make a grommet by sticking an acorn or a small piece of, or uh, a small pebble or something like that to kind of make a grommet, and I'll show you how to do that. But for this one, I'm actually gonna just stake it right through. And that is my teepee smoker. All right, so if you have a tarp that you're trying to reuse and it's not dedicated, then what you could do is either tie to a grommet that comes on the tarp, or you can make a grommet just by putting a pebble or an acorn or walnut, something like that. What you do is you put it in and gather some material around it. And then you tie that off with a simple clove hitch. Come around, make a half hitch. Come back through with your second half hitch and you have your clove hitch. Tighten that down at the base of that pebble that you put in there. And you see I've got the two parallel wraps with the diagonal locking bar. That's my clove hitch. Now I pull that tight towards my stake. You can use whatever anchor knot you want to use. In this case, I'll use a round turn and two half hitches, which I just come around. One full turn, create that window to make my first half hitch. Slide that up against the stake. Come back over, creating that window again. Come through that window and pull everything up towards the stake. So that is another way that you can anchor this off and not put holes in a tarp that's not dedicated to this. So when I'm making this jerky, I've got three things going for me. One is the salt as an osmotic that I put on earlier in the day to start drawing some of that moisture out. And that's going to help keep that from spoiling. The other thing that I'm going to have is kind of a low heat because I'm going to be cold smoking this. I don't want to actually cook it. I'm going to be cold smoking this at a temperature of probably you know 150 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. So at the same time that's going to be drying it out some more and it's also going to be coating it with smoke and that smoke is going to inhibit the growth of bacteria. So you know dryness, a little bit of heat to help dry that out, the salt and the smoke are all things that are going to make this jerky actually last longer in the field. A 
I don't want a lot of heat on the inside, but I do want a good bed of coals that'll put off some smoke. I'm just making a really small, well-contained fire in here. All right, so all I did with the meat was skewer them through some green sticks and I left about an inch of space in between all of those. And then I just bring them up in here and hang them off the platform that I created. Make sure that you leave enough space and that the meat's not touching each other anywhere. Alright, so now that I got the fire established, I've got all the meat hung, I close everything back up and kind of seal it up. I should feel warm smoke come out of the top. It shouldn't be hot to the touch. Uh, if it is hot to the touch, then you've got too big of a fire in there. You need to ventilate some of that out or you're going to cook the meat. Remember, you just want to cold smoke this around 150 and you can't really tell what that feels like, but it's just kind of warm. Uh, it's not hot to the touch at all and you should have smoke rolling out. All right, well that jerky came out pretty good. It's nice and dry. And doesn't look like it overcooked or anything, so not much we do. Nothing left to do but taste it. Oh man. One more piece. Yeah. I have to do this outro <laughs> with my mouth full because it's good and I'm not spitting it out. Um, but yeah, so this is the TP smoker, just a cotton canvas, painter's drop cloth, some bushcrafted clothespins, some tent stakes uh, that we made, a couple of lashings, tripod with a fork stick, Oops, that. tripod with a platform around it, and some green stick skewers. Uh, now I've got jerky for probably a week or so of classes. So we appreciate your views. We appreciate your likes. We appreciate your comments and your questions. We appreciate your shares, passing this information on and helping grow this channel like you guys have always been great about doing. So uh, until next time, hope to see you in the woods. <laughs>